Honey Badger here. Got another call for uh, HVAC issue at a tenant's house. Um, this seems to be the, the year of fans going bad, fan motors and etc. <laughs> going bad. Uh, they weren't getting any air blowing through their vents. I came out there, I uh, checked the blower motor on the inside air handler and it was just kind of kicking on and off, just moving a little bit like this and then it would stop a couple seconds later, three four seconds later it would try again and it just kept doing that. Um, it's in all likelihood the, uh, the ECM which is the control module that's attached to the motor. Um, the motor's probably good. I'm, I didn't have my meter with me at the time, so I just pulled the whole unit. I'm going to check it out right now and see. But I did order a whole new uh, motor and, and uh, with the ECM. And uh, it's, uh, it's a replacement. It's supposed to be a direct replacement for this one. It's not the same part number anymore. This unit's 12 years old. And so, even if it is just the ECM, I think I'm just going to replace the whole thing. And if the motor's still good, I'll hang on to it um, because it's 12 years old. <laughs> so, uh, right now, I'm just first going to take a look at the ECM and, uh, and the motor and check out the motor and see if the motor looks like it's good. Now this thing's from a Goodman system. Um, the whole cage here, the assembly is really easy to, to take out. Uh, you just take the, the front panel off and then uh, you've got two connectors here, cables that go up to the uh, control board. Uh, there's a ground wire that goes here and you remove those and then there's a couple of screws that tie this in. This thing just slides into the uh, upper, the, the top of the air handler section. And so you just take, up, take the screws out of here and you just slide the whole assembly out. So I just brought it home with me so I can just work on it at home and check everything out. And then I'll, once I have it ready, I'll, I'll take it back to the tenant's house and install it. Um, Let's see, so the first thing we want to do, this is the ECM and the motor below it. And I'm just going to remove these. It's only held on by three screws and then there's a connector on the inside. I'm just going to pull that off uh, so I can access the motor winding connector inside. Okay, so I pulled off the, uh, the ECM. You can see the connector on here. You just kind of push on this and push on this tab and then pull it out and uh, these are the three screws that hold it on here here and here uh, they're a quarter inch six millimeter you'll need a, a narrow socket to, to get those off I visually inspected this when I was there at the tenant's house the other day and I you know you can look for signs of something burning uh, smell a burnt smell um, I couldn't find anything of the sort, but a lot of this is potted, and so there's there's electronics and stuff below this that could possibly have gone bad. Um, possibly, oh, well, I do see a little something here, possibly, on this uh, current limit device, but... Anyway, um, I'm going to replace this anyway, but I really want to just check the motor and see if the motor's good. And so to do that, I'm going to check out the windings. I'm going to need a multimeter to, to measure the ohms on each of these leads. Let's see if I can get all this in here. And you're going to first want to check 
each lead to the frame. See if anything's shorted. So it's showing it's open there. So that's good. Open. And open. Don't see anything there. Next, you're going to want to check the windings. So you're going to go to each pair of these here and measure it. So I'm getting like three and a half ohms there. Seems kind of low. Um, Five point eight, five point nine. Hmm. Measure this one again here. They should all kind of match. Three point five. Hmm. So maybe there is an issue. Yeah. I think there might be an issue with this motor. So anyway, I'm going to take it out and replace the whole assembly. And so to do that, I'm going to remove these here. I'm going to have to, first I'm going to turn this around and uh, loosen the squirrel cage. Uh-oh, uh I seem to have lost a couple of screws. Hang on. <laughs> That's where they are. Got a little magnetic strap on here and they just picked them right up okay so flip this guy over and i'm gonna have to loosen that set screw i'm gonna mark this uh, shaft with a sharpie so i can see so I can measure how far in the squirrel cage goes when I attach the new one. And uh, the other thing I did is I marked here, before I took the ECM off, I marked here where the connector is. So you're going to want to, you know, because you're going to put this in here, you're going to want to make sure it's rotated so that the ECM is sitting in the same relative position as it was before so that you can make the connections to it. Okay, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, which is probably the hardest thing to do, is get the squirrel cage loose from the shaft. Uh, you gotta loosen the set screw. I tried using uh, some leverage and a loop of uh, cable tie to just pull it up and that didn't work very well. Um, I'll show you what I did. I just hooked on a piece on the set screw on a long breaker bar and tried pulling it up. That didn't work very well. Um, sprayed a bunch of WD-40 in there. Um, still didn't work. So then I tried just taking a large crescent wrench and just holding that in place and grabbing the, just grab the uh, squirrel cage from down here and then just try working it. And that, that's what got it loose, just working this crescent wrench back and forth while holding the squirrel cage in place. You don't wanna put a lot of tension or anything on the squirrel cage or you know pull up on it too hard or anything like that. You don't wanna damage it, but uh, now it's, it's loose. And while you're turning it, you can kind of pull up on the squirrel cage, like from the side here, and it'll just work its way up. 
So now I think it's loose enough to be able to remove the motor mounts, but you definitely want to do this with, you know, the, the, that's the first thing you want to do is uh, get this loose. Also, I'm sure my marks are gone uh, where this goes. So really what I looked at it from this end uh, before I started messing with it and you just want to, when you reinstall this, you want to make sure that the squirrel cage has about the same amount of distance from this lip here to the edge, and then this lip over here, that lip to the edge, and just kind of center it in this opening. If your squirrel cage is really dirty, dusty, got a lot of crap on it, you might want to just try cleaning it off first before you remove the motor because you still have an opportunity to spin it and clean it, you know, while it's on here. It's probably better to clean it before, you know, with the old motor in place before you do the new new motor. So if you get a lot of dust and accumulated gunk on here, I would suggest uh, getting a so, you know, some brushes and, and just clean off the fins and everything before you actually take the motor out. I got a battery terminal cleaner that I'm using to clean off the kind of the leading edges of these fins. And there's just a, a ton of stuff coming off. So if you got one of these, probably wouldn't hurt to just go around and do that initially with each of the fins. You know those toothbrushes you get when you go to the dentist and you just throw them in a drawer and never use them? They work really good for cleaning out the fins. <laughs> Not bad. Now you're probably going to run into a balance weight somewhere on this fan, so or maybe even more than one, I don't know. Uh, make sure you don't uh, move it, <laughs> alter its position. And again, you know, don't do anything that's going to bend the blades or anything like that. These have tiny lock nuts on them, so make sure you uh, don't lose any of them. Okay, now I'm flipping this over and... Uh, Get it to where I can get the motor sort of above the ground so I can lower the motor and I'm going to twist this and twisting this back and forth while uh, I'm holding the motor and it'll just kind of loosen that shaft and, and it'll drop down. The motor assembly will just drop down and leave the squirrel cage there. Okay, got the motor out. And the squirrel cage is still in there, obviously. And I was able to clean this side on the inside with the, the toothbrush. And now I'm just going to clean all the fins on this side. Okay, I got this thing uh, cleaned out with a toothbrush. Now there's all kinds of dust inside it. I'm just going to hit it with a leaf blower. <laughs> see this replacement motor is a little bit longer than this motor um, you can also see that the, with the mounting that the legs go up right here to this point so I'm when I transfer this over I'm going to also put it at the same level as this um, there's plenty of room for this motor to stick out on the on the outside of the blower so uh, I'm just going to keep that the same and then you can see that these are kind of lined up in the same relative spot. So I'm going to mount this so that this is along here just like this one and get everything oriented the same way. 
this bracket is just attached with uh, one clamp right here. May have to spray that. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> These three things just slide in, so uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get the ring on and get all these in place but you just gotta loosen it up enough to to get it over and then get all these in place and then you can slide it down okay when you're getting this into place like i said this having these right about here is correct but really what you want to make sure of is that this is at least at the same level as the bottom of these openings it can be a little bit lower, but you don't want to be blocking the openings because that's airflow for the motor to cool it. So just make sure that you've got all this all the way around, that you've got this band not obstructing any of these holes. It's okay if these do, they can in certain spots, but you don't want anything else to be obstructed. I decided to move this over actually a little more than was on the original because there's there's no uh, slot here or over here. So on at least two of the three, I, I've got more airflow, and and then this one kind of straddles two two of them. So it's actually probably a little bit better for airflow than the other one. It should still be fine for plugging in the plugging these in here. Should be fine. And before you tighten it up all the way, you want to make sure that the, the tops of these are all at the same height. You know, the same distance from this plate. All aligned with the plate because you don't want it to be, you don't want this to be sitting crooked in there. Okay, the best way to get this thing on is to just set the motor on the surface with the uh, shaft pointing up. Put the uh, squirrel cage kind of in the middle of the, the blower and just lower the whole thing right on top of it. And then once you do that, you can uh, maybe just lightly tie the set screw over here, then uh, flip it over and, and get the uh, feet in the right spot and put the feet down. And then you can do final adjustments on the shaft. Okay, I got this thing sitting a little bit, this connector a little bit lower than before. I had it like over here, but I know I have plenty of uh, cable, uh, slack cable to connect it. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. should be just fine. And then tighten these all up good and snug. I mean, don't over torque them, but tighten them up good. They have lock nuts on them, so or the lock washers, so they should be a... Okay, and then last thing to do is adjust the uh, squirrel cage so it's centered in the housing. So it just slides back and forth, and you just want to eyeball it and get it to where you think it's pretty close to the same on both sides, like so. And then tighten up the set screw good and tight um, against the flat of the shaft. Make sure it's against the flat of the shaft. Okay, there you have it. Ready to be installed. Catch both sides. It's kind of dark in here. There we go. Slides in like so.
Okay, the ground wire connected up here. It's tightened up. And just plug in these two wires, two cables, I should say, down here. two screws that attach here just it allows these to slide in and out and so I figure out which holes they were in more than one set of holes here Tighten these guys in and we're good to go. Okay, and then all we need to do is plug the disconnect back in. And the lights come on on the controller. We we'll need to go set the fan to call for cooling. System is off. We want to change it to cool. Done. There we go. And there goes the blower. good I hope you found this video useful uh, if you did uh, I encourage you to please like or subscribe I'm not looking to be a YouTube star I'm kind of old and ugly for that but I do uh, the reason I do these is just to try to help people to save money and so it's uh, it's it's good for me to know if, if I'm helping you out uh, and I can only tell that by uh, you know if you like my videos so uh, please do honey badger out